Hey, I'm Taryn Rain with The Remote Yogi, and we're back on our beginner yoga series talking about yoga props, but today we're gonna talk about some unconventional yoga props. So if you're practicing yoga at home, it's unlikely that you will have all the studio tools like traditional blankets or bolsters or um, anything else you can think of. So I'm gonna walk you through some ways to get some deep restorative practices and learn how to modify your practice for home use, especially if you've had an injury or you're not feeling well, um, using things like chairs or walls can help you um, build your practice over time. So join me, we are going to walk through how to use pillows, blankets, chairs, and the wall today. Awesome. So right off the right off the bat, I've got a blanket here. You can also use um, a thick towel or anything else. These are just great to have around, especially if you've got hard floor at home and you've got sensitive knees. Um, anytime you're up on your knees, you can place this underneath to make sure you've got some extra cushion, especially in poses like lunge, low lunge, where we've got this knee really firmly planted into the ground. Having the blanket underneath gives you a little extra padding. I also really enjoy using a blanket for poses where I'm on my belly and I'm lifting up onto my groin like locust pose because it does not feel good to lift up onto the groin on traditional tile or somewhat fours, so you've got that extra cushion. Another great way you can use a blanket is to give you some extra support. So if your knees feel really sensitive when they're bent in a pose like extended child's pose where they're bent really deeply. You can always take this blanket, maybe fold or roll the blanket, tuck it back behind the knees, and then when we sit back into child's pose, we've got this extra space to open up the knees and it makes it a lot easier to sink in and give the knees some extra space that they need to bend. There are tons of other ways to use Blankets, I like having them around to maybe put under my back or under my head in certain poses. So have one around, they're really handy and in a lot of guided videos, especially in my series and my site, I'll suggest blanket use. So have one handy when you're practicing at home. On to pillows. So pillows of all shapes and sizes, throw pillows, bed pillows, whatever you like. These are probably one of my favorite props to use when I'm practicing yoga, especially if I and feeling particularly lazy and want to just hang out in bed while I do some restorative poses, you've already got your props ready to go. So I'm gonna walk you through some quick ways to use these, but I also have an entire blog post dedicated to restorative yoga moves that you can do with pillows. So I'll make sure to link that in the blog post. So if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you head over to the blog. So some easy ones, um, always just kind of coming to a seat on some pillows, especially if you find that your knees are really high when you're seated. This one is giving you some extra space, it feels good, and you're not getting uncomfortable here on the seat. One of my favorite ways to use pillows is in reclined cobbler pose or in traditional cobbler pose where the bottoms of the feet come together and the knees fall out wide. So if you're gonna hold this pose for a long time, we wanna make sure that we're not opening into the hips too deeply. So grab some pillows, you can even fold these pillows, bring them up underneath the knee to give you some extra support. And that way we can hang here for a while. You can even lie back and chill here for as long as you want. You can even put pillows underneath your back and your head for some extra support. And you can hang here, watch a movie, have a good time. Love this pose. Other ways you can use pillows is to sink in deep to poses that you don't usually relax into. Maybe a nice seated forward fold. You can stack up some blankets, maybe another one or a blanket. And I can fold all the way into this and just hang out. So again, always tons of great options for pillow use. Um, I've got a whole blog dedicated to it, so check it out. 
but have these around, especially if you want to be lazy with your yoga, that's okay. Sometimes we need rest days or sick yoga or period yoga, ladies. I'm all about the pillow life. Enjoy it. All right, next up is wool yoga. But just like I said before, I have a whole uh, video and blog post dedicated to wall stretches. So go ahead and run over that way if this is something that interests you. I'm just gonna show you some quick examples on how the wall can help benefit your practice. So if you're newer to yoga and doing poses on the floor such as downward facing dog or dolphin pose are really hard because your body is maybe heavy, you're not used to the body weight, doing those poses on the wall is gonna give you the same stretch benefits uh, without all the extra weight on the wrists and on the hands. So check this out. So to do something like downward facing dog on the wall, just make sure you've got a nice space here. I'm gonna bring both hands flat onto the wall in front of us, maybe a little bit below the shoulders. Legs are staying as straight as possible. We'll start to walk the legs back, keeping these arms straight, letting the chest fall, letting the head fall. Awesome, so we can hold this for a lot longer because we don't have the weight. Same exact thing with dolphin pose, so we'll just put the elbows on the wall. Same thing, so just walk in this back. You get this really nice shoulder stretch. We can also use the wall to get one of my favorite shoulder stretches on the planet. So I call this like clockwork. You take your hand nice and slow up the wall. And as soon as you get to a point where you can't keep going with the body flat against the wall, we just start stepping away from the wall. Just continuing to inch those fingers down, really opening that shoulder back. And we can just do this a few times, nice and slow, as fast or quick as we'd like. The wall is also really great for helping you find some balance. So if you want to hold a standing forward fold for a long time, you can always put your butt up against the wall like this. And you've got that extra support to just hang here as long as you want. You can grab a block to put underneath the hands, and you can really just hang, letting the wall support you here. If you're doing any kind of balancing pose and you're kind of new to balancing, again, just use the wall to kind of support you as you hold on one leg. You've got something stable to fall into, and you can start to engage the core and learn all about balancing while feeling safe at the same time. A few more ways to use the wall in more of a restorative practice is on your back with your legs up the wall. I'll show you a trick on how to get into this pose. So if you sit with your hip all the way up against the wall like this, as you start to bring your legs up, you can twist yourself down onto the back. That'll save you from having to do a bunch of scooting and inching towards the wall like this. This is one of my favorite poses. I do this in bed up against my headboard, just keep my legs straight up in the air like this. The pressure of our legs pressing down into the low back is gonna help with low back pain. So it's a great place to be. You can also do cobbler pose on the wall, letting the knees fall out. You get a little hip opener here by taking the feet onto the wall, walking them out. You can take the legs wide here. Again, if you've got yoga blocks at home, you can throw them underneath the thighs so you don't open too far into this posture, but holding these as long as you'd like. Lots of different options on the wall. Even if you just do one, legs up the wall is probably my all-time favorite pose ever, especially for anyone suffering from low back pain. All right, and last but not least, we have some chair yoga options. So people often get this impression that just because we're in a chair, it's gonna be easy. Not true, you can get a ton of awesome stretches done in a chair, um, and even some core work, even some engagement. So. I also have a yoga video and blog post on how to do poses in your office chair. So if that's something that interests you in doing a little bit of yoga practice at work, make sure to check that out. I'll link it in the blog. But we'll just start off showing you some really simple ways to stretch. So coming all the way to the edge of the seat here, we can take one leg straight out in front, lean forward, do a little hamstring stretch here. Feels really great. You can also take the same foot Stack the ankle on top of opposite thigh. Open that knee up. This feels really great. You can use the hand here to kind of press this knee down. Little hip opener. You can also lean this forward to get a really deep stretch into the hip. Just like 
we were doing pigeon on the floor or doing um, a reclined supine stretch, very similar from a chair. You can engage the core a little bit by extending that leg out straight, holding as long as you can. Maybe doing a little crunches, bringing the knee into the chest, extending out. Lots that you can do here. You can take that foot out to the side and back in. We're engaging the core. This is hard work. This isn't easy. Lots of options there. You can do lots of arm work here, maybe grabbing the side of the chair, reaching overhead, doing this nice side stretch, maybe doing some big arm circles. You can find twists by maybe reaching for the opposite side of the chair or even back around for the back of the chair. See how that feels. Lots of different options you can do from the chair. Those are just some simple examples. You can also do some standing postures with the support. So if you're really new to yoga or you're um, more elderly, I used to do this with a lot of home private practices with an elderly couple. We do a lot of chair yoga standing. So similar poses, let's take triangle for example, where usually we try to reach our hand for the block of the floor. If you don't have that kind of mobility, you can use the chair here to bring your hand down to the chair and you're still getting this nice side body stretch. The legs are still stretching out here into the hamstrings. Same benefits. You can also use the chair to practice things like extended side angle by letting the thigh rest on the chair. So you've got the support, so you're not sinking in if you don't have as much strength in the thighs just yet. You can stay here, maybe practice warrior two from here. Maybe kind of lean it over, find that side body stretch, but you've got the chair supporting you. Last but not least for standing, we talked about balancing using a wall. Of course, you can do the same thing with a chair. You can use this to find tree pose, to find any kind of standing pose where you've got the extra support here. You can kind of practice moving your hands away and coming back with full knowledge that you've got something to grab onto and without the fear of falling. But you can also do things like downward facing dog. If you've got a sturdy chair, you can bring your hands to the back of the chair like this. Slide it out, let the head fall through. And this feels really awesome. Again, standing poses like warriors, you can do with the use of the chair here, lifting as needed, coming back down. So if you're newer, if your body is maybe more frail, use a chair, use the wall, use pillows, use whatever feels good, make it up as you go along. I always suggest if you're trying to find balance in a pose and you've got a coffee table nearby, use whatever you want to use. Just make sure you're continuing to explore your practice and don't be afraid of trying new things. Thanks so much for watching. This was part five of my six week series for beginners. We'll be doing next week all about the eight limbs of yoga, kind of diving more into the lifestyle practice of yoga, of meditation, of breathing, of kind of living in alignment with your practice. So tune in for that. If you're on YouTube, make sure to run over to the blog, get all the details on these poses, these practices, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.